Hello all, welcome to my next free tutorial. And um, in this one, I'm going to basically refine one of the um, sort of random quadruped mechs that I created a couple of tutorials ago, where I'd used the custom brushes and discovered a design. And uh, this one's going to be all about uh, refining that design. And um, I'm pretty exhausted this week, honestly. Um, just did lectures, did a lot of travel. I did a, a freelance job up in Portland a week ago. Did a uh, uh, beginning of last week, then ended up in Toronto doing a lecture with Autodesk, and then went to CCS in Detroit on the way back. So, and that was Monday, Tuesday. So a little trashed this week. But uh, this one I had pre-recorded a while ago, so I already had one queued up. So when I've got one of these super loose uh, sketches, um, <clears throat> I just come back in here, make a cleanup layer, you can see on top there, and just start going in and refining it once I've cleaned up the silhouette. And I'm not afraid to go back in and, you know, just completely modify it. Because you see it's super scruffy. So it's, you know, we're not quite starting from scratch, but we're not that far away from it. Um, especially in the, the level of refinement you've got to do. But, you know, when you paint over these things, this underpainting and this loose stuff can really start to add a lot of nice visual texture if you're looking for a bit more, you know, illustrative quality to your work. So you can see I'm joining this kind of two-pronged uh, jawline and this the pair, of, <laughs> pair of eyes there. And uh, so I just use this little hard edge brush and um, some people have been asking about brush uh, settings and with this brush I usually work um, you'll see my opacity and flow up there are set both to 100 percent and then this brush has pressure sensitivity turned on um, for both opacity and flow so most of the sort of glazing that I'm doing where it's not covering over 100 um, percent is just because it's pressure sensitive and I'm working on a 21 inch Cintiq and in this case I've just sort of said my lighting is you know sort of centered um, really just trying to turn surfaces and refine what's in there and looking into it and saying well you know what do I like what don't I like and I'm just sort of glazing over and experimenting so you see I draw I drew a center line on for the head there and um, some sort of quadruped max so in this case the light is a little bit center up to the left a bit you see I'm starting to cast a shadow in there and uh, then starting to bring in some more light across the surfaces that are perpendicular to the light source. Um, and that's, you know, starting to show the form, of course, when you turn those surfaces by adding more value <laughs> change across the surface. And I was thinking about it, dropping in some little reflective eyes in there, but ultimately ditched that idea. So this is um, pretty much my process. It's much like that color quadruped Mac that I did. Um, same sort of thing. You you know you lay down a bunch of interesting patterns and shapes and textures just to stimulate your brain and help you find some shapes. And then you go back over and uh, this is the part, this is actually the stage that ends up taking the most amount of time. Not from a rendering standpoint, um, but strictly from a design standpoint, right? You can start to pull out shapes and you know pursue those for a while and then you can find that they just completely fail and they don't work and so you know I'm not worried really so much about symmetry yet at this point I'm just trying to investigate that chest plate there thinking about it this is the the rib cage behind that front arm so letting some light shine in there and um, <clears throat> brightening it up a bit and so what is interesting is you just go in here and you start to pick out shapes and I'd like to try and work with what I've already got there um, because that was the whole reason to do this process of sort of, you know, custom brushes. And if you, if you don't know how I got to this base sketch, look back a couple of tutorials. And there's a um, tutorial that shows exactly this process of, you know, taking random custom brush collage and then pulling out a shape and working out a silhouette. Um, and that's effectively all I did, and that's what I started with. And so here I'm doing the same, and I'm starting to think about joints and how things might bend and articulate. So starting to put in a little pivot point. And this is still one of those older tutorials I did where that circle pops up every time. So every time you see the circle popping up when I'm using a paintbrush here, that's because I hadn't found that button at this time, which was with the uh, eyedropper. There's a little button you can turn off um, when you click on the eyedropper tool. 
that when you select that circle won't pop up. I find it very annoying, but um, anyway, uh, the new, the later ones I'll record won't have that happening. So here I'm just evaluating it. Do I like it? Do I not like it? Um, and ultimately, I don't really like it, so <laughs> I'm going to go in and change it. So I'm going to basically start over. So I, I left that in though in this tutorial to show that um, you know it's okay. It was it, if the design's not right, it's not right. So um, I decided to give it a try again. I, I just didn't feel that I'd pulled the best um, shapes out of that underlay, so I ditched it. Um, actually, I think I put it just in a separate group and then hid that thing. And now I'm going back in and I'm investigating. You know, what else could the same underpainting, the same collage, what else could that stimulate? right in my brain what else could I see what other shapes and other connections could I make and you can sort of it, you can keep going on this right you can just keep going back to the original source and seeing new shapes and when you see those new shapes you know right you just sort of squint your eyes at it and say oh yeah I kind of think it could be this and then zoom in and start painting so I kind of liked this more block style the squarish kind of head a bit and um, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to get that. His, his head is quite bent, right? And we're seeing a lot of the side view here. Um, although his head is very narrow as well. So it could be, it's kind of like a three-quarter view, but we're seeing a lot of the front view of the chest. So um, I'm going to have to try and resolve, you know, how to pivot that head on the rest of his body. Um, here I'm just erasing my silhouette a bit, cleaning up a few more of the edges. And you see this process is very painterly and loose. Um, you could also do a line drawing back over the top, right? Um, I like to work this way though, where I sculpt a lot of the form. Just I'm sort of, I'm kind of drawing and, you know, rendering simultaneously. So I'm kind of drawing with value, and um, as opposed to using lines, right? I'm using values to define the forms. So there's no lines there to hold edges. What you have to do is use the value to hold the edges. So. Um, it's a little bit more complicated, um, so definitely easier to do a line drawing and then come back and just render it. But when I have so much value already, um, I think it's fun to work this way. Um, I just made a quick copy of that, did a um, copy merged, so it took a snapshot of everything underneath, and then I'm just going to warp it. I'm going to compress and foreshorten that far side just a little bit, so it's turned, it's got like a little bit of a peak along the center line. And I'm trying to float that head over the top of that. So I just made that chest plate symmetrical. And there you go, I'm just foreshortening a tick. Right, so we see a little bit more of this character's right side than the character's left side, which is turned away from us a little bit. And now going in with my lighting, uh, my light source being off to the uh, left and um, low in this case, and so that's why it's catching more of the side of the head than it is the top of the head. So any of the top planes are a little bit darker, and the side in this case is a bit brighter. And I'm just uh, cutting in some cut lines, um, separate some parts. I'm trying now to resolve, okay, how is his head going to continue um, and connect back to the body? So I'm trying to find my center line from that little diamond chest plate area and try and resolve and make a mechanical connection you know, or what looks like it could be a mechanical connection. And you can see I'm struggling there because the head is, is really turned so much. I've got to really um, try and resolve this mechanism through here. You know, it gives it enough space to turn that much. All right, so now I'm just... Now this is a little bit more like drawing, right? I'm using a little bit less of what I got from the original collage and painting over it a bit more um, and creating something new, but that's fine, right? It's, it's all... Um, you use just that collage as a starting point, just to kind of trigger your brain and see some see some different shapes that maybe you couldn't draw, or maybe you wouldn't normally draw. And adding a little bit of form to that. So you see, I'm doing basically just straightforward uh, matte surface rendering, uh, where I take the uh, surfaces that are perpendicular to the light source; those are the brightest. Wherever the light passes tangent to a surface, that's where I'd put a core shadow. And then beyond that, uh, where a surface is turned away from the light, um, being blocked by the rest of its body, of course, that's on the cast shadow side. And so that's where you darken down the most. And then if you want to show form on that side, you've got to use reflected light on the shadow side, like the belly there. Um, 
that's where I add a little bit of reflected light from the ground to show that thing rolling away from us. And this side's going to pretty much be all in shadow. And I've got some symmetry issues to fi figure out here. You know, where's that other shoulder? It looks like it's a little bit lower on that side. Um, and so you, you could also copy that, you know, his, his right shoulder and flip it over there. But in this case, I kind of want it to be turned and then tilted down. So I'm going to ultimately have to put a lot of part lines and plates into this guy. So it looks like um, he could articulate into a really asymmetric pose. So that's what I'm trying to do is cut the surfaces, try to add a little bit of, uh, you know, enough plates. And here I'm going to drop this shoulder a bit, trying to get it closer to the far side shoulder. And uh, just keep on going. So this is one of those where, you know, it gets a little slow, right? I've sped it up quite a bit, but still it's a bit slow because it's, you know, design. And design can take a long time to find. And then you could find, you know, you could head in a certain direction for a while, and then you could just ditch it like I did the first design, which I wasn't happy with. And I think, you know, this one's got a lot more potential. So I think it was the wise thing to do, even though it was a ways into it. You know, especially when you're doing sort of random you know, random designs like this. Um, there's really no narrative for it. It's just this, this you know, quadruped uh, mech of some sort. And I don't even know the scale of it, and I'm not even going to bother with the scale on this time. I'm not going to put a figure with it or anything. It's really just a, I wanted to share with you a refinement phase of where I would take a design um, that I liked the initial collage. I liked the initial gesture, the pose, um, you know, the rough proportions. I liked all of that. Um, but it was really, really loose. There wasn't much there as far as the aesthetic of the bits and pieces. And so now I'm just going in and refining those forms. So you can see in a way it's kind of like sculpting. Um, it's actually very close to sculpting. And when you're doing big, um, you know, volumes, it really feels like that. And so once you get the rhythm down and you get the get your value structure set up, you can really just go in there and start picking. Uh, you see all my color picking, well it's not really color, but all my value picking is just happening from within the rendering that I already have. And then it's it's about you know making aesthetic decisions on those bits and pieces that you see um, and you just keep on going and going. That's why I like working in grayscale so much because um, I don't get caught up in color and um, the color can really slow me down as far as um, getting the design figured out and you'll have a tendency not to you know like scrap a certain piece or um, sculpt it as much if you're having to also paint with color shifts you know based on the light and the, the environment you're reflecting etc so I like to when I just want to think about design I like to eliminate having to think about color at the same time so this is one of the ways that I like to work and you'll see it's pretty small on screen there but this is my full screen it's my 21 inch Cintiq it's a uh, 1200 by 1600 pixels the screen is and um, you'll see that I, I'm only painting in a very small area of my screen and I'm doing that on purpose um, I'll zoom in now um, in order to go in now and refine but when I'm really just looking for the big gestures and I'm looking for the big forms I like to stay zoomed out and then I go back in and worry about the perspective and try to straighten up the symmetry and that sort of stuff which is what I'm trying to do now because um, this head's tilted three-quarter view for us and I'm widening it in certain areas and right trying to refine the forms facet it a little bit more now connect and straighten up that part and then at some point I've got to fix up these lines that go across so now look at those lines try to squint your eyes you could put in some guidelines now I'm trying to true this up, so I'm cutting that off the top. And it's starting to get closer. Still, when I look at it now, it's got it's got a ways to go. I'll probably revisit it, I hope. Or I could leave it loose. We'll see. Maybe it's not that symmetrical. It's been a couple of it's been beaten up a bit. Had a rough life. So again, my light's over to the left, right? I've said it's a little lower than it is high and so I'm, I'm making the top of the head any of the top surfaces I see those are going to get a bit darker and also the underside surfaces um, of course are in shadow 
So really the side of this guy, that head is a bit, he's also his head's tilted a bit. Um, so it's a, tilted up towards the light a bit. And of course, always a good idea to flip horizontal uh, a couple times. So it helps you to see the perspective differently there. That really helped me to see that line across the top of his nose, the top of his head. And your brain gets so, sort of conditioned to seeing the perspective in one way. So it's a really good idea to flip horizontal and um, see it from a different perspective. And it will help you um, to fix it up. Your brain needs that sometimes. So you can make a hotkey for that, or you could just do it the way that I just showed you. Just flip canvas horizontal. So these things are, I mean, I really enjoy this part of the phase of uh, sculpting and trying to find the design. It's This is now well beyond the the you know speed painting phase it's not a it's not a you know super quick concept sketch now i'm getting in there i'm starting to noodle things and refine add uh, pivot points think about the mechanical linkages and trying to uh, add enough plates and and separate parts that look like just to look like it could um, articulate enough to have the head in that position and it's i'm sure it's still you know it's total cheat but um, it just really needs to look like it could work and so I just need enough plates there to feel like it could be bending. So you know on the back side of the head those plates, those gaps would all be closed and then on this side they're all open like an accordion kind of. Um, and starting to think a little more about the symmetry so that shoulder's got to go up behind the head there. So there we go, add that. That's looking a little bit more believable. And of course you would just, you know, the more time you want to spend on something, the more you can just sort of do everything I did on that guy's head and neck, you would just start going around doing on the entire body. Uh, I'm not going to take this one that far. I just really want to get that that chest and head figured out. And I'm going to play around a little bit with the body. I mean, it's really loose right now in its uh, symmetry. But I, I sort of like that. It's like got this kind of weird, you know, gorilla pose. It's sort of walking a bit on its, you know, pointy hands or I guess feet, hands, knuckles, whatever they are. And uh, these weird little tiny legs in the back. So just more shapes, more graphics. Um, haven't done much in the way of value graphics. And value graphics for me, um, if you watched my proximity-based um, styling lecture, you know that the, when I say value graphics, I'm talking about like his eye right and that's obviously like a darker painted material um, and like even the hole though just behind a little further up his head that could also be you know it could be painted but it could also be a hole it doesn't really matter but those are just create interesting shapes based on those values and um, so I haven't really done much in the way of you know lightening and darkening certain panels um, like thinking of what's like painted white or what's you know a metallic finish and what's a darker maybe a rubber finish or something it's really just kind of like primer gray in a way and I'm just trying to uh, worry mostly about the design and sculpt the forms because it's easy to go back and just pick an area and darken it up so you can just make a selection for instance and you know copy uh, sorry if I can remember here command shift C for copy merged. That'll take a snapshot of everything you see, and then you can go to levels, darken it, and then you can do worry about value graphics after without having to repaint anything. So I like to work a lot in this kind of middle gray zone and then worry about my value graphics later. And now getting into casting some shadows, trying to be consistent with my lighting, trying to get some overlaps happening punching in a couple more little <laughs> pivot points and just refining the arm a bit and here I want to probably make it a little darker so that it shows up against my background and putting in some little cast shadows to get some overlaps again so you can see it's more of the same I mean at a certain point I mean you know it's kind of fun to see but it, at a certain point it's you can spend a lot of time on it um, there's no really nothing in the way of the painting technique. It's just um, making surfaces go bump, basically, and turning corners um, by using the using the light and the shadow, and that'll establish your overlaps, and that helps place things in space. 
and then uh, really design. And the design is the thing that can take the longest um, by far. So here this arm is just bothering me a bit. Um, I just don't feel that it's symmetrical enough and it's kind of out in the wrong spot. So I'm going to try and play around with that a bit, see if I can get a little more symmetry. Right, it could be made of multiple pieces that can all move independently. So I'm just saying, is there a better solution here from where I had it before? Maybe, maybe not. I don't remember what I ended up with. So yes, I think that's a little better. So the way I did that is I just did a um, copy merged, and now I'm looking at the other leg and trying to add a bit of that, those same sort of forms to this one, opening up that hole there. And in this case, I'm just painting the background values get a little more separation from that his right rear leg so at any time you know you can be working you know if you're comfortable with the, the head forms and the neck then you can jump into the body like I'm doing now and um, investigate those forms and those rhythms and those patterns and then you know everything's fair game at this point because you know nothing is that None, none of it's ever sacred. You just, you know, you got to do what you got to do to make the design interesting and compelling. And so, um, and we don't have a brief for this guy, so we don't really know what's accurate. So I'll clean up my ground plane here a little bit. Now I'm going to cast that shadow off to the side. Remember, I'm, and I tried to put that, his right leg into uh, cast shadow from the upper chest and everything so I don't have to paint it. So I can just do it as silhouette. And I'm adding a little bit of symmetry to those rear legs. And maybe he's got some sort of bent knuckle. I was thinking more about that gorilla pose at this point when I was painting that hand. It's so maybe standing on knuckles. And just a little cleanup on the ground plane, just to get him standing there, relating to the ground plane a bit. And I like to do these and then, you know, check it. And say, oh, do I like it better? Yes, no, maybe. Um, but I like to do these in grayscale, and then you see now I can, uh, the colorizing techniques I like to do as well. So I'll do a little levels adjustment on the whole thing. And see if I liked it or not. And I just wanted to get a little bit more light up into that head and chest area. And so what I did is I'm doing it with a levels adjustment. So I made it a, an adjustment layer at the very top. I went to my levels, I adjusted it so it was a bit brighter. And then I inverted it to make it um, black so nothing was happening and then I painted white back into it just in the areas I wanted to bring in the light and it's because I wanted to bring in the light without having to glaze over and paint over all those surfaces so it's you know I'm just treating it now kind of like a photograph and um, you know adjusting it like that as opposed to painting over it to brighten it up it's a nice technique um, it's the nice thing about Photoshop right effectively your your paintings or sketches become photos in a way and um, you can use all the photo manipulation tools so here I'm playing with the mechanism back there I imagine it's got some pivots and now I'm thinking about an entirely different leg so do I want to put it another another kick into there another joint where it kicks back up much like uh, you know side view of a horse's leg of their rear leg so it's got like a you know an extra kick there and um, as opposed to what looked like they were just kind of coming straight down so I'm trying to set up some overlaps here and get the foreshortening right. Get some uh, circular pivots in there, and maybe put that leg out there. A little, some sort of a little hoof slash claw thing. And ultimately, not crazy about that. I'll try a different position. Probably, you know, I should have done this in the very beginning. Um, but I was just kind of pecking around on this thing. You know, originally the thing I liked about it was the the upper torso and chest and head and never really worried much about the legs. And of course now I'm paying the price because, you know, but, it, you know, it's on a separate layer. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really cost you anything to go back and rework this part of the body. Um, the front part can stay just as it is. So I'm just investigating position for that leg. See what works and what doesn't. So just quick block out. So you can see just really scruffy quick paint. This is more like you would do with uh, kind of like markers in a way. So I'm thinking about tilting that leg a bit and twisting it, trying to find the right, the right pose. But I think for this demo, I think the head is pretty much done. Um, and 
this is the process I like to use a lot when I'm refining a, a design. Just sort of keep it loose and painterly and um, not be afraid to delete things, not be afraid to completely change it. You know, and it's not so polished. It's not like I've, I've committed to noodling and detailing something for a long time. I was telling uh, Thomas Bertling, who I'm working on the drawing book with, ultimately I, I ditched it, I think. So I'm not crazy about it. So I had something else on that same layer I wanted to keep. Yeah, I wanted to keep those details, so I just pulled them off that layer. One last attempt. Let's see if I like it or not. Uh, maybe. A knock need. Doesn't look great. Anyway, I was just telling Thomas Bertling about this thing I heard on NPR last week that was really cool, which is called the IKEA effect. And the IKEA effect is essentially um, they asked a bunch of people who took you know, and bought furniture at Ikea, and when they took it home and they put it together. And what they found was that people assigned much greater value to the finished piece of furniture that they made um, because they made it as opposed to a professional putting it together. And so that's basically has to do with if you put a lot of labor into something, um, the tendency for you to like it goes way up um, versus uh, somebody else coming up and doing the same sketch, you're much more critical of it when it's when somebody else did it um, because you don't have any labor invested. So what they found was, and the reason they call that the Ikea effect, is that because people were assigning so much more value to the piece of furniture that they put together versus a professional assembling it, um, that it was good to carry over. It was how products, how let's say how bad products uh, end up going to market. And um, it's because there's so much effort and labor put into it that it skews people's um, you know, ability to really critically step back and say, you know, no, I should just, I should just change that. Um, or, you know, we shouldn't go to market with this because it's not, it's not that great. Um, but they've, they were the ones who created it. And so in the end, right, they end up going to market with something because they have so much labor invested um, that they've tricked themselves into believing that, you know, it's much better than it actually is. So this can happen a lot in art as well. You can spend a lot of time refining and noodling something, and you know you've got so much time invested that you you like it because you've put in the labor. Um, but if you could step back from it and say, well, is it really good or not? Okay, you might start to change things. Like I ditched that first head was to just say, you know, I didn't like the design direction, right? And I haven't invested so much time that the that the IKEA effect had taken hold, and I could no longer make critical decisions. So try when you can to sort of separate yourself from you know, the time investment that you're making and really keep, uh, keep an open, oh, an open eye and, and an open brain to making the revisions you need to, to move and advance the design and make it better. You see it, I made some fairly dramatic changes to the, those front legs in this last closing moments and bringing a little bit of reflected light over there on the far side now in that shadow area. So this would continue on, um, just, you know, refining, refining, uh, until I had a finished concept, but I think we're into the last couple minutes for this week. So I hope you enjoyed it. I uh, hope you uh, hope it helps with your design a little bit. And uh, don't be afraid to make the changes you need to make along the way. And uh, try this simple matte surface shading, working in grayscale, trying to find the design. Um, and when you get something you like, then you can go and make it color, add all those textures, and just go watch a couple of the other tutorials for that. So uh, I think that's about it, and uh, have a great week.